Helvete. Helvete. Vad ska jag göra? Vad ska jag göra? What am I gonna do? 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 What am I gonna do with this XPS phone? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with this XPS phone? What? Dungeon tiles? I have dungeon tiles. I have millions of dungeon tiles. Dungeon tiles. Dungeon tiles. Dungeon tiles. Dungeon tiles. Dungeon. Wait a minute. I know. What about boss dungeon tiles? <laughs> Hey good folks, my name is Leif and you're watching Devs and Dice. Today, I'm gonna show you how I did these wonderful boss dungeon tiles. But since this video will be a little bit longer than usual, I suggest that we, without further ado, get into it. Alright, so these designs I did in Adobe Illustrator and my idea was to create some sort of, you know, homemade stencils. So I just glued these onto some uh, cardstock that I had from old packaging. And once they were on there, I cut them out using the X-Acto blade. The more firm cardstock enabled me to use them either as an airbrush stencil or a guide for me to cut it out on the XPS. Opening up the Game Master box, I could see that there were six nice sort of sheets of XPS foam. And these were the ones I planned to use for my boss dungeon tiles. Now measuring this, I could see that they were not quite 8 inches and not quite 12 inches. So I sort of just split the difference between the two sides and that way it's barely noticeable. So I just measure out uh, 1 inch on two places and then I just draw a straight line in between them. I do this in both directions and what we'll end up with is a nice one inch grid system. Now I was a little bit unsure on which one of these I wanted to start with but eventually the vision I had the most clearest was the undead one. And for this I'm gonna use the skull stencil that I did. Here I'm just tracing it out using a pencil and sort of getting the rough shape of it. Now at this point, there were some things I didn't yet think of, which you will be, you know, wary of later on in the project. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out as many of those one inch grids as possible. And I'm just scoring the XPS foam so that I can run a pencil in the actual sort of cut line just to sort of widen it a little bit. Now once I got to the skull part, I sort of had to bring out my X-Acto blade and make small cuts and then, you know, bit by bit, surely I, you know, eventually got all around the actual sort of uh, shape of it or the stencil. And once I did that, then of course I did the same thing I traced with my pencil, just to sort of widen the gap a little bit more and make it a little bit more clearer. Now scoring these lines, it's quite easy to do freehand as well, depending on, you know, how safe you feel with that, you can do that. And eventually you'll just, you know, bevel or whatever it's called, all of those squares and you have a nice one inch square grid. As you can see, I used the ruler just to sort of push down some bits of a skull just to make it pop ever so slightly. Here I just sort of took a little bit of that sandpaper just to get rid of the glossiness on the actual XPS foam. And here I'm using some tweezers from the Army Painter just to sort of pinch away bits of the rock, you know, here and there. And what I actually <laughs> forgot to mention or forgot to shoot was the aluminium ball that I used to get that stone texture. Here I'm just using a little bit of, you know, that pencil to drawing some cracks. And again, here I'm coming back in with that ruler because I really like it when, you know, uh, the tiles are a little bit uneven. Now, uh, in the Game Master set, the, there is this nice sort of gravel mixture, which I tend to sort of add whenever, wherever there's like cracks and stuff like that, just to sort of show that you know, itty bitty rocks have perhaps, you know, flaked up from that.
And then once I was done with that, it started looking quite nice. But there was one thing that I really didn't like, and it was the cracks. But I remembered that I could actually use, you know, alcohol-based Sharpies, because they melt the XPS foam, and these were a little bit easier to actually make cracks with. So, this was pretty much done for priming, but there was one big problem that worried me. We are currently experiencing a cold winter in Sweden. And as you can see, it's pretty cold, but I, I love it. It's brighter, you wake up from the cold. Ah, love this. I'm happy to say that, you know what, that primer, which is supposed to be water-based, works apparently in minus 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. So that's all good. So I started stippling in some of that, uh, is it called cavern base, just to get a little bit of, you know, differentiation in the tiles. Here I'm coming in quite strongly and just doing like a overbrush with the dungeon base. And here I'm using the dungeon highlight and I'm almost stippling it in. I'm focusing on the actual skull because I knew I wanted the skull to be a little bit brighter. It's almost like a 80% coverage uh, with that skull and the little teeth uh, there as well. And as always, my accuracy uh, wasn't that good, so I just cleaned that up with some dungeon base back onto wherever I happen to have gotten a little bit too much white on. Here I'm starting to sort of stipple in some of that dungeon base on all of the piles of, uh, well, gravel and rocks. And here I'm using that cavern highlight just to sort of dry brush on a little bit of a highlight on them. I um, used the subterrain wash, which is sort of a dark green wash. I used that, but I also did a mixture using some of the black paint that comes with the box. And just so you know, uh, with this, it gets kind of shiny, so I just used some of my Army Painter anti-shine varnish just to sort of get it back to a nice matte finish. Now, there is some white also that I used to sort of do some sort of edge highlighting on the actual skull, because I wanted the skull to pop quite clearly. So, nice contrast, and it, and it actually looks a lot better also in the end. It, it looks a little bit weird when you put on, like, bright white paint, but it'll dull down. Here I'm using some glistering blood from Army Painter and I'm actually filling up my brush and then I'm shooting the airbrush but it's just air and it creates these nice sort of spray patterns which are excellent for like blood and I'm seeing this as a sort of you know sacrificial last you know under the boss room. Here I am abusing, uh, sorry Army Painter, uh, their brush here. I'm actually spreading the bristles so it becomes almost like a you know much wider feather because I realized if I did this I could actually create some really nice drag marks. And here I created another pool and I'm really trying to make these tiles evocative so that players can sort of, you know, think, oh shit, what happened here, you know, who has, you know, been the poor victims, or and so on. And this is pretty much the end result for this tile, but I wanted to add some details, and for this I'm coming in with the tufts included in the Game Master set, and this XPS foam, which, or sorry, XPS uh, glue, which I'm using here, I'm in love with that nozzle, because you can have such an accuracy when you play, place out those little dabs of glue. I love it. Putting some tufts on and then I'm calling this done. So as you saw, I did five more boss dungeon tiles, which I will show you one by one. But in the interest of time, I will be skipping over some of the basic steps that I already did with my undead boss tile, such as making an inch grid, priming, and those sort of things. All right, let's get back into it. All right, so the second tile out is the orc one, and for this I'm using Abomination Gore, which I've thinned down and I'm shooting this through the airbrush, and you can see that I'm using the stencil as, well, a stencil, just to get, you know, the overall shape, and I think the idea here that I was toying with in my head was that 
the orcs have taken over some sort of, you know, I guess building or whatever, and they've, you know, made their mark onto the place. And here you can see I'm just sort of filling in some of, you know, the, the actual sort of paint from the stencil. And I thought, you know, obviously orcs are fairly advanced. They probably don't have, you know, spray cans or, you know, airbrushes. So they probably painted this with brushes. So I actually just made, you know, some streaks to make the, it look much more, you know, painted by an orc hand, so to speak. Now... I really got inspired by doing this and I found some of my bits and bobs, some weapon racks, and I just cut off these weapons in half just to sort of, you know, show that there's been battle here or, you know, many good people have lost, you know, battle against the orcs here. Similar to the, the other uh, dungeon tiles, I'm coming in with some tufts and usually I tend to put these wherever I have a little bit of rubble. And then some blood effects just to finish it off. Alright, on to the Fiend boss dungeon tile. Now this one was uh, very much inspired by, I think, by Diablo. So as you can see, the stencil isn't sort of complete and I did this on purpose just so I had, you know, could actually cut it out. Here I'm using, I don't know, some people call that a compass, uh, we call it uh, a, a passare in Swedish, uh, a cutting sort of round thingamajig just to create a round sort of circle around it. And once I had that circle, I'm again using my pencil, my mechanical pencil I think it's called, and just sort of tracing that all around. Here for V's, and again I'm going to show you some techniques which I wish I had learned a little bit faster, but... For this one, I'm cutting it out with my X-Acto blade, and then I'm using one of my clay sculpting tools, or new ones I got, just to sort of dig out some of that XPS foam. But doing this very carefully, just so I don't go through the actual dungeon tunnel. And this was a little bit tedious, but it was kind of fun. And you can also see that I do sort of complete all of the lines, so it becomes like a, a complete pentagram. And like I said, this is very much inspired by, I think, Diablo, which I really loved. The first one I'm talking about. Remember, uh, guys and gals, I'm an, I'm an old fart. So that game really made an impression on me. One thing that I failed to mention in the other dungeon tiles is please continue these one inch grids to the sides. Very important. The basic uh, color scheme was for this one pretty much the same as the first one. So I'm cutting ahead just to sort of save time. And here I'm using uh, the Army Painter's Master Dry Brush to stipple on some light gray. And then I'm actually coming in with some white at the very edges here. And the reason I'm doing this is this is a perfect undercoating for a glowing pentagram. Now, I used Vampire Red and I thinned it out with thinner quite a lot just so that it wouldn't cover but more create a filter uh, i guess you could call it once i had that on i'm coming back in with some white which i diluted and i'm shooting it straight into the actual pentagram and here i'm using some lava orange again diluting it like hell <laughs> no pun intended and then you know shooting it straight onto the white bits and as you can see the intensity really is retained and this is where I, I feel like now I, when I think about this I, I, I realize that I have learned you know how <laughs> acrylic paints uh, work and it's not often I'm proud of myself but in this case I was like shit Leif this was good you're you know you're starting to learn the intricate you know mechanics of of painting a little bit more that's awesome And I really liked how this one turned out. And as you can see, the small rubbles that I also had in this, I actually took the opportunity to shoot some, you know, OSL towards the actual, um, you know, the, the glowing pentagram. This one, in general, I did keep quite simple because I saw it as, you know, perhaps, you know, there's been some sort of unholy ritual, you know, this could be in Warhammer Fantasy or in, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. And I sort of just took the pentagram as a, you know, some sort of unholy symbol. 
Now, uh, five points, and on each point, I painted up some uh, some resin skulls that I have, and I just glued them sort of facing uh, outwards because I thought that you know that looks cool. No real experience in if this is right or not, but I thought it made a nice sort of uh, detail to everything. And with those steps, I think this one was done. All right, now we're gonna start on, I have to say, preface this, this one is my least favorite. But I did figure out something new. So this is gonna be the dragon one. And for this, I looked at some designs online for the, the sign of Tiamat, the five-headed dragon a goddess or whatever she is. Now, I used my sculpting tool and I actually heated it using uh, just like, you know, a candle. And that actually melts the foam, which gave me a better way to actually, you know, shape the foam. Here, I'm coming in with five colors, as you perhaps know. Tiamat, she has one, you know, black head, one white head, one green head, one red head, and one blue head uh, for each of the chromatic dragons. So I'm coming in with sort of a base, you know, color, a darker version of these, and then I'm using those master uh, dry brushes from Army Painter and sort of just stippling on some sort of edge highlighting, I guess, just to give it some depth. Here for this one, I'm actually coming in with some rough iron from Army Painter to the middle. And I was really debating what sort of color would, you know, these guys want. I didn't know, so I just went with rough iron because it looked good. Here I'm coming in with some of my terrain wash, which is a black, slightly brown wash. And I'm being quite liberal with this because I wanted it to be sort of much more grimy. Here I'm going to come in with some sh shining silver, which is the brightest silver I have. And I'm actually going to mix it, uh, mix this with some acrylic water effects, which um, I got from Woodland Scenics, I think. And here I'm just sort of mixing those two together and I'm sort of pouring it carefully using a coffee stir stick into the symbol of Tiamat. Now, of course, dragon cults also, you know, make sacrifices. So I'm just coming in with some glistering blood and using the airbrush air to sort of push that away. Now I wanted to have these sort of acrylic gems on, and these are tricky. They can fly away quicker than you can, you know, react, but, but eventually I got a hold of everything and, you know, managed to glue them on using the same sort of XPS foam glue that came with the box. And I'm here I'm using tweezers because that was a lot easier to handle these with than my, you know, relatively large fingers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I got these just from a hobby store. Now for this, I wanted a little bit more embellishments and I just made these five teeth or claws with, you know, uh, green stuff. The paint job uh, was quite easy. I primed these using uh, Army Painter's brush on primer. Then I'm just wet blending in skeleton bone, brain matter beige, and I think it was leather brown. Now, once I had these in place, I wanted to, you know, make them a little bit bloody. So I'm coming in with some blood. And again, I'm using the airbrush and trying to make some nice streaks and make it look disgusting. And at this point, this one is finished. Now I had it in my head to do a sort of vampire boss dungeon tile as well. And I actually went away from my original design a little bit because the original design had like wings on the side, but I didn't really like it. So I just sort of, you know, cut it out and I, you know, pretty much just, you know, dug out pieces of XPS because this one I didn't want it to be smooth or anything. Now, I was thinking about a different sort of tile pattern here, and you can see I'm trying to cut using, you know, an X-Acto blade, and this would have worked fully completely, but I found it a little bit, you know, disturbing to cut in the diagonals. Um, you know, it was a little bit tedious. So, it was at this point I actually figured out that, wait a minute, I have, you know, a metal, you know, sculpting tool, which is super sharp. So I just used a tea light and heat that up and then, you know, went to, you know, went to work. 
and it actually worked pretty nice and this is essentially like i guess my own hot wire foam cutter the the pen version and here you can see that in my uh, <laughs> in my inspiration i also wanted some sort of drop in the middle of a skull and that was going to be some sort of blood or something and I wasn't uh, happy with the design, so I uh, decided to add another sort of square in the middle of all of these shapes. Now, once I was done, uh, you know, with all of the burning, I primed it, of course. And here I'm coming in with some of that cavern base and dungeon base on the middle tiles. Now, the middle square, uh, I'm painting that white, actually. And again, it's uh, undercoating, and also the skull I painted white, which was a mistake, which I didn't know at the time. For these little squares, I'm using Hydra Turquoise and Elemental Bolt, which I'm gonna sort of just blend in a little bit, just to create a little bit of differentiation in these tiles. Now, for the actual skull, I'm gonna come in with Cursed Blade, which was a nice sort of disgusting you know copper bronze but the thing that i loved the most was this gemstone it was a red metallic from uh, army paints metallic set and then i colored everything and poured in some tinted blood all right so time for the last one now since i had uh, leveled up and learned this nice technique of using my uh, sculpting tool as a yeah hot wire pen i essentially just traced out the chaos symbol and this one was supposed to be like i don't know warhammer chaos and or aberrations i didn't really care now the middle i figured i wanted this to look a little bit like you know wood so i just used the other side of my sculpting tool just to sort of create some sort of nice wood grain and also, I didn't want this to be a generic sort of stone dungeon, so I'm going to come in with Alien Purple and Warlock Purple. And I'm actually going to create a checker pattern, because, I don't know, I think in my head, I was thinking of like, you know, Warhammer Fantasy Occult in someone's basement. They, you know, all kinds of, you know, lustful colors that, that you know, is just, you know, it's, it's chaos. And this took a couple of coats, because, uh, you know, Purple tends to be quite, you know, harsh to work with, but eventually I got a decent coverage. Now, I'm so happy f uh, that I got that uh, metallic set, because for the middle here, I'm going to come in with some chaotic red, which was very soothing. Uh, but I also loved the sort of sickly green tones of the tainted gold uh, that I got. And it, and it really looks like, you know, you can see that it's gold. But it has that a little bit greenish tone, which makes it, well, I guess look tainted or not very <laughs> healthy gold. I don't know if I'm talking, you know, you know, rubbish, but for me, it, it really spoke to me. And I was like, yes, that's the one I'm going to be using for this one, because it, it looks like, um, I don't know, seductive, but dangerous somehow. Now, I came in and I just used the uh, Masterclass dry brushes again to sort of stipple in some of that cavern uh, base and here i'm just dry brushing on some dungeon base just to sort of make it look a little bit worn but i wasn't quite happy with this so i'm going to actually come in with some dungeon highlights and make it you know a little bit more faded uh, even more and I knew already at this point that I was going to, you know, once I was done with this, I was going to abuse this with my homemade wash because I wanted this to look like it really had a history that, you know, foul things had happened in this place. And, it, and it, you know, it needed to look really grimy and dirty. And like you might know, if you follow the channel, I am really partial to the sort of, uh, you know, more dark uh, fantasy style. Now, for the actual chaos symbol, I started, um, I guess you could call it wet dry brushing or just highlighting it with some dragon red, which created a nice, uh, you know, base for it. But I went even higher with pure red. Now, this I'm just making sure that I don't cover it all to the edges. And this actually created a nice pop into that nice symbol, which I really loved. 
Now, for this aberrations and whatnot, I'm thinking, you know, beholders, I'm thinking, you know, HP Lovecroft, disgusting things. I just, you know, sculpted these uh, using some green stuff, and I'm coming in again with those alien purple and warlock purple, and I'm essentially just creating a very, very simple wet blend with these two colors. And I think at this point, we're going to actually have a look at the final result. Alright folks, this was super fun to do, and I am in general very happy how these boss dungeon tiles turned out. And I want to extend a thank you to Army Painter for sending me the Game Master box, it was really nice of him. But what did you think about these boss dungeon tiles? Please feel free to tell me in the comment section down below. Now if you want to support the channel, there are actually a number of ways you can do that. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And finally, you can of course join my Patreon. And I want to thank all of my patrons for their support. But especially, I want to do a shout out to my warrior level patrons. Chris Grop and Blake Crowell. On that note actually, Mr. Blake Crowell was kind enough to inform me that today is a very special day. You see, today is the birthday of his daughter, Abby, who is a fan and has even started painting minis of her own. And let me tell you, I've seen some of these minis in the Discord, and she is quite talented. So anyways, I want to extend a happy birthday to Abby, and I hope you have an amazing day. Keep on painting minis. So with this, I want to thank you so much for watching this very long video. I wish you an awesome day. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video.